Okay, it's top of the hour. We are starting this session. Thank you very much for joining us uh, in, in, uh, in person in Kyoto uh, International Conference Center, and uh, as well as the, 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 through a Zoom uh, remote partic participation. Uh, this session is a D0 event uh, uh, titled Talk with the Metaverse Residents, uh, New Identity and Diversity. This session is to, uh, the, the, basically it's a presentation session, but uh, uh, really uh, quite different from the, the normal session uh, because it, uh, this session is a feature uh, Metaverse re Residence, and then uh, the main part of uh, uh, this is the presentation from the Metaverse. Then uh, before we go into the detail, uh, let, uh, let me uh, make the round of the self-introduction. My name is Akinori Maemura uh, from Japan Network Information Center, JPNIC, uh, the organizer and the proposer of this session. And then uh, I, I have the, uh, another organizer, uh, uh, please self, make a self-introduction. So uh, I'm Keisuke Kanes from NEC Corporation. Uh, thank you for uh, coming today. Yep, thank you very much. And then uh, uh, we have the two, uh, two presenters. One is the uh, Ludmila uh, Bradikina. Mila, please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, thank you for inviting me here today. Uh, my name is Ludmila, and I'm a PhD uh, candidate at the University of Malta in Europe. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Mila. And then, uh, uh, Nem, uh, it's your turn, please. Hi, this is Bachelor Gang Nem. Call me Nem. I am a Metaverse Culture Evangelist. I'm spending much time in Metaverse, and uh, I'm working on the activity to introduce the culture of Metaverse. I'm happy to talk with you today. Thank you. Great, Nem. Thank you very much. So, uh, the, before uh, the, get, getting into the, the uh, Nem's presentation, uh, just uh, introduce the, the history of this session, because uh, the, this session was first introduced to, in uh, uh, Japan, uh, Japan Internet Governance Forum 2022. That we have that in uh, in uh, the, the same day zero session, by the way. Uh, then uh, it it was uh, it was really interesting to uh, for us to uh, to experience uh, the metaverse residence live. So uh, I I I I was I was quite convinced that uh, this 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 kind of a session should be needed in uh, in the global IGF in Kyoto. Then uh, here I am. Then then uh, thank you very much for the uh, for the Mag and uh, the IGF secretariat to uh, accept this uh, this proposal for the for make it real. Then with that uh, uh, bef before before I, I go long, uh, please uh, I, I I will hand hand over the microphone to Nem uh, for her presentation. Nem, please thanks. Thank you, Maemura san, for super kind introduction. And uh, thank you, people coming to Internet Go Governance Forum today. We are very, very happy to talk with you. Well, we name Miller as a research unit to investigate the impact of the metaverse and the YouTuber on humanity. Today, I will go ahead and I will talk about metaverse and identity. And after that, Mira is going to talk about diversity. My name is Nen, uh, virtual girl Nen. Do you know millions of people around the world are already spending their lives in the metaverse, this virtual world? I am also one, one of them. As a Metaverse culture evangelist, I'm spending much time in Metaverse every day and conveying its culture to you, people in the physical world. I'm introducing the culture as a virtual YouTuber and from TV show, and also I am publishing a book and uh, getting, a, uh, getting a grand prize by the Japanese Book Award. Today, I'm gonna talk about, I will, I will, in the first, I will do a demonstration of my metaverse life. And after that, I will talk about metaverse, identity, 
and communication. Okay, let's go on to the first one. Demonstration of Metaverse Life. In the beginning, uh, let me explain the my equipment. What kind of equipment Metaverse people use? Um, this is a VR Google. I think some of you already use this, maybe. Well, this is a device uh, that allows me to enter the first person perspective of, uh, of this avatar and fully dive into the world of internet with my entire body. Currently, my physical body is something like this, <laughs> wearing this big headset. By the way, what is this big sensor? This one. <laughs> this is really troublesome when I am drinking beverage. What do you think is this? This is facial tracking sensor. This sensor allows me uh, to... It's scanning my uh, facial movement of my real body and uh, applying the movement to this avatar. Look at my... I winking and <gasps> facial movement and the outcome, the car movement, everything. But by using this, my avatar's face is something like my real body. And also, I am attaching so many devices, equipment on my real body, and uh, that allows me to. Uh, this is finger trick tracking. My finger movement is also real time we tracked and applied to this avatar. And full body tracking. Not only headset and controller, I am attaching so many sensors. Sensors like this on my stomach and legs. This allows me to move the Good movement of my avatar, and even I can stand up. <laughs> in my real room, uh, my chair, gaming chair is around here, so I can sit down here. Yeah, this is equipment. By the way, why do you think we metaverse people use this kind of tracking mechanism? The reason is to gain a sense of unity with this avatar. Feeling the avatar's body as if it were my own physical body. As a result, experience in the metaverse becomes super, super realistic. And in addition to VR equipment, I am using voice changer. Um, now I am speaking with my voice converted to guard voice. So converting the, my avatar and the voice, everything. It feels like I've, I've been reborn as a completely different person in the metaverse. This is VR equipment. And uh, in the next, let me talk about VR world. Currently, now I am here. This is my study room in VR. <laughs> in VR, well, I live with a sense of freedom amidst great nature. My physical body is in a very, very small room, but I never feel confined because, yeah, I am feeling like I'm really in this metaverse world. Hmm. Now, I am opening up a vast space only for me, spanning tens of kilometers just for myself. In the metaverse, you can generate space infinitely and for free. And uh, you can also use teleportation. In the metaverse, the concept of movement doesn't exist. You can teleport to a friend at any time or summon a friend to your place. And you can also set free access restriction to this world. 
Unlike physical reality, you can freely set access restrictions to the spaces. Usually, I am allowing my friend to enter my world freely, and I we spend time with my friend talking with each other or watching a TV show together or something like that. Oppositely, well, I can also create a space that only people who have paid can access and hold a paid event. For example, yeah, this is my music live event. <laughs> yeah, this is me. And uh, yeah, many people are coming. Well, yeah, in the music live, I have gathered up to 1.2 thousand of people at most. If you try to hold such a big event in physical reality, it requires big costs, such as venue fees and many staff members, but in the business, you can operate it for free, just for, by yourself. This is really fantastic. Also, Metaverse is accelerate creativity. Within the VR space, you can work on programming, modeling, everything, without removing your VR goggle. Unlike that on PC screen, the create creative is very, very intuitive. I, G, F. Oh, I <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is already working as a 3D model. Yeah, like this, you can use this VR world, yeah, to be more creative. Yeah, this is really wonderful. And uh, after that, let me talk about my avatar. In the metaverse, you can freely design your avatar and live in any form you like. The, my avatar, for example, is unique in this world. This is only designed for me. It is designed by my favorite famous manga artist based on the illustration, this one, illustration, he drew for me a model created a 3D model. It's similar to having a hairstyling and uh, or ordering tailor-made clothes in physical reality. But in Metaverse, everything can be edited, including your head, face, everything. Also, you can quickly change your avatar. I have so many avatars. <laughs> I have so many avatars. Yeah, these avatars are created by another artist. Let's try. Now, my soul is moved from this avatar to this avatar. This is now. This is me. <laughs> Switching avatar changes my mood by wearing this avatar. I could be more cute. And, yeah, this is, this is also my avatar. Yay. By, when, when I am wearing this, I am more, how can I say, I, I am more comical. Yeah. Avatar changes my feeling. It's very interesting. Okay. Well, now, oh, now this is me. You should. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, this is the <laughs> secret of my avatar. By the way, how do you think I am watching all of you right now? The answer is virtual display. Well, this one. <laughs> yeah, I am watching you using the window. And uh, not only this, uh, I can open so many windows around my body. Well, oh, this is my cunning paper. Don't save it. <laughs> well, anyway, it's like having 
are several huge weightless smartphones and uh, they are floating around of my body. Yeah, it, this is super, super useful. You can, you can make them invisible to the others. Yeah, it's super useful. Yeah, this is the demonstration of, the, of my metaverse life. Let's go back to my study room. Okay. Have you have you started uh, getting the image of metaverse life? From now on, let's talk about metaverse. What is metaverse? The word is coming from the combination of meta meaning beyond and universe. Yes, it means oh, it means a world surpassing physical reality. Now the world is getting attention as the next generation of internet. The world is originally coming from a super famous uh, SF novel named Snow Crash. And uh, in the novel, the metaverse world is something like the people can immerse themselves using VR Google and people can communicate. Yes, what I am showing you is something the, it show up on the snow crash metaverse. Then, what actually is the detailed definition of metaverse? Actually, the definition of the metaverse is not yet so clear. But in my book, I am defining by the virtual space that meets following seven criteria. Spatiality, self-identity, massive simultaneous connectivity, creativity, economic availability, accessibility, and immersiveness. But I don't explain the detail of them, but simply that is not a game. The virtual world where you can lead your life. That is a metaphor. Okay. The metaverse wow that meeting that seven criteria already exists. That is social VR. The famous social VR is VR chat, Neos VR. Oh, this is Neos VR, what I am using now. And cluster, virtual cast, and so many services are there. And they have pros and cons. And they are not perfect, they are under hard development. Yes. And then, how many people are there living in Metaverse world? Currently, the population is dynamically increasing. It increased by more than five times in the last three years. The reason is COVID. Um, by the COVID accident situation, people wa want the online communication, online but body to body communication. And second reason is Quest 2. Previously, the VR Google is super expensive, but Quest 2 changes everything. It's more cheap. As a result, currently the population is estimated to be between several millions to around 10 million people worldwide. Their population is so increasing, even right now. Then how the people spending their time? <laughs> it is a big question. Yeah. Uh, to reveal the lifestyle of the metaverse people, we name Mira conducted a large-scale survey. In 2021, we collected 1,200 responses worldwide. And uh, this year, in 2023, the number reached 2,000. Thank you. And uh, this is the service, service user service. The 
Doyan Chat is number one popular service worldwide, and uh, the other service, uh, services are used depending on, on the country. For example, Virtual Gas Cluster, they are popular in Japan, and Neos VR is popular in Europe and America. Yeah, it's interesting. The trend is different depending on the region. And the age, how old are the Vedamas people? Yeah, every range of the Every aged people are living in metaverse, but more than half is 20s. Yes, uh, it's a little young. And the uh, play frequency, how free, high frequency do we use VR Go under coming to this VR one? Yeah, it's very shocking data. Almost half of them are using metaverse. Almost every day. Also, how long time do they spend in one time? The reason is more, more than half people spend uh, more than three hours in one session, in one day. It's so long. Yeah, I'm also like that. And uh, what actually is the uh, purpose to use metaverse. This is also interesting. There are so various reasons. Well, to socialize with friends, uh, walking around the world, play game, to participate the event, uh, broadcasting, making avatar, creating something, everything. Yes, in the metaverse, you can do everything. Yeah. Today, uh, I think the revolutionary point of metaverse is these three. Identity, communication, and the economy. Metaverse will result in the big revolution for the humanity. Today, let me talk more about identity. Identity. Yeah. In the metaverse world, you can freely design your identity. Name, avatar, voice, everything. Identity transform from what you received, but what you design. Exploring new selves, living life as a desired self, or switching between multiple selves. Yeah, I am also switching uh, the selves in the real world and the metaverse world. The metaverse allows the soul to be perceived in 3D enabling awakening with aspects of yourself that could not be recognized in the physical reality world. Okay, one interesting fact is that the difference of the physical sexuality and avatar, appear avatar appearance. This is the sexuality in the physical reality of VR user. And uh, this is the avatar appearance amongst many users. And this is, uh, yeah, by female users. Both male and female use feminine avatar. It's very, it's, it is almost 80%. This is very interesting data, I think. Do you think this is only about Japan? No. Uh, even in Europe and uh, America, the trend is the same. Feminine avatar is very popular. Why do you think? The reason is, uh, Fashion and communication. Fashion, uh, they use uh, feminine avatar, uh, simply prefer the visual appearance of, of the avatar. And the communication is, yeah, secondary big reason. It's very interesting. Yes. And uh, yeah, not only the uh, avatar appearance, let's go on to the avatar type. There are so many various types of avatar in the metaverse world. We categorize these avatar into seven different categories. Human, semi-humanoid, uh, robot, animal, plant, monster. Which one is used most? The, re the result is the semi-humanoid. Yeah. In the physical reality world, uh, normal humanoid type is very uh, popular, uh, almost 100%, I think. But in the metaverse world, the more fantasy uh, state avatar is very popular. And uh, the 
use is a little depend depending on the re region. For example, in United States, the animal type or avatar is a little bit, little bit more popular. And, well, in Europe, oh, robot type avatar is popular like this. The trend is different depending on the region. And in the end, let me talk about communication. In Metaverse world, you can design yourself and how they communicate. Well, we investigated their communication distance, skinship, and love. In the Metaverse world, filters such as age, gender, and titles are eliminated and uh, accelerating more essential communication. This is the most wonderful point of the Metaverse communication. Yes, this is the distance. 75% uh, of people say in Metaverse world, the avatar to avatar distance getting more close and also skinship extreme, extremely increased. Uh, 74 percentage of people says uh, they do skinship. Do you skinship in physical reality world? I think this is very interesting data. And love, this is also interesting. The, yeah, this is the world you can spend uh, life. So love is also popular. But the real, love exists, but the trend is very different. For example, well, in the metaverse world, they are fall in love because of their personality, not the visual. If, if, when you do similar question in the physical reality world, number one answer is basically the visual in the, in the, in the beginning of the love. But uh, in the metaverse, the trend of love is changed. And also, one more interesting thing is the, when you fall in love in metaverse, uh, the biological sexuality of your real lover is important for you. The 75% of people say it's not important. This is very different from the love in the physical reality world. Yes, communication also changes in the metaverse world. Conclusion. Well, for the past 4 million years, humanity has lived in physical reality. Uh, existing IT technology has been great, but it has only served to make life in physical reality more inconvenient. But in Metaverse, Metaverse is a fundamentally designed new universe where various magics are possible, allowing humans to live in more humane way. Many people already live there, creating new unique cultures with more freedom. The evolution of humanity has already, already began. Thank you. I hope this presentation makes you more understand Metaverse. And then, let me pass over to my best friend, Mira. Thank you very much, Nam. And uh, yes, a uh, uh, very good presentation. May, maybe give her the applause. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mila, your turn, and uh, I think you can you, you can spend the full twenty minutes, and then we will have we will still have the question Q and A uh, time for ten minutes. So uh, the, the for if you had any question to the to the name name part, you, you can you can definitely have have uh, make, make that in the last last part. Uh, I I will definitely uh, secure some time for the for the Q and A. With that, uh, thank you, Mila, for your stuff, please. Thank you. Uh, let me share my presentation. Can you see it? Is it all good? Yes. yes. Thank you, Nam, so much for your amazing presentation and for your amazing introduction to the metaverse. I think it encapsulated really well um, the overall different aspects of uh, the virtual world. And so my talk will focus more on gender and diversity, especially from the academic perspective. Uh, so let me introduce a little bit myself. Uh, so I obtained my master's degree in Asian studies from the Geneva University back in 2021. And my master's thesis focused on researching Japanese men 
uh, who use uh, feminine presenting characters in virtual worlds uh, as a form of um, gender fluid practice rooted in traditional Japanese arts. And after completing my, completing my master's degree, I received the Prix Jean, so a gender prize in English, uh, award from the Geneva University in 2022. So since 2019, I have published um, a dozen of peer review publications in international journals focusing on manners in which technology impacts self-expression, uses gender identity in social interactions. I've also had the pleasure of sharing my findings at uh, numerous tech-related events, such as SIGGRAPH, LABAL Virtual, IEEE, EU, VR and VR, and VR Days Europe. And as of this year, I had the opportunity to lecture at Japanese universities such as Keio, Kindai, and Kyoto University. So now, as a PhD student since 2023, I continue to work on uh, my research that I started in 2019, but focus more broadly on gender practices among Japanese users in the metaverse. Uh, my perspective, my theoretical perspective comes from feminist and critical men's studies that inform my research and inscribe it in a global context. I conduct my participant observation in the metaverse and online spaces. So what I do basically is virtual ethnography. And I find it very informative to go you know, beyond the virtual slash physical uh, world barrier and examine how changes uh, on and beyond the screen can impact who we are, especially in terms of gender. So the theme of today's talk is gender and diversity in the metaverse. So for a while now, the target set by the UN Sustainable Development Goals, as you can see on, I think for you it will be on the left-hand side, the small picture, right? Um, so those goals have been addressing, among other issues, diversity, safety, and inclusion to rebuild the physical world. However, ensuring the representation of people's diversity, ethical behavior, and providing a sense of community and belonging should not be limited to the physical world. For example, as professor of journalism and media studies, Eric Saka notes in the book, The Future of Digital Communication, there have been debates about the lack of diversity actually among developers and decision makers in tech related industries. In a recent article about designing the metaverse, Matthew Zalio and John Clarkson proposed 10 principles for designing a better metaverse that you see on this page. It's the big black picture. Um, so in that article, the authors uh, outline several ideas for social equity and inclusion, and they highlight specifically the importance of empowerment, uh, empowerment of diversity through self-expression, so among other 10 principles, right, to construct a good and inclusive mass metaverse. And I want to focus specifically on the gender self-expression part of the metaverse. So today we have three parts. I'll start uh, with some very brief academic foundations. I will not make it too long, but I think it's good to build up on existing research. I will then present uh, several of my case studies, one uh, from my masters and two from our research with them, one of which you've already heard about a little bit. And then I will close on with some potential issues uh, stemming from uh, self-expression and what could be good to consider if you want uh, a safe experience for everyone. So let's start uh, with building on the strength foundation with the academic research. So first, an avatar appearance entails specific interactions, right? So for example, if you use a very small cutesy character, it will be probable that people will be very welcoming and warming towards you. If you use a very strong, big character, people might have a different interactions towards you. Just in the physical world, unfortunately, our, appearance, our appearances might determine certain interactions. So, and users know that they are judged on their looks. And the second aspect is that in visual, uh, the visual characteristics we choose can impact, for instance, users' confidence and behaviors. Once again, depending on the character that you, you incarnate in the virtual world, you might act differently. It might give you confidence. It might give you self-fulfillment. And it will, might also impact the way you interact, especially if you use a character or for different uh, gender representations that the one you identify is as in the physical world. And finally, what is most relevant for today's talk, avatars can be seen as tools that enhance the individual by making them virtual, empowering them to become who you want to be and create the person you want to be, as Nem uh, has mentioned in their book. 
So an interesting phenomena that Nam briefly touched upon, and it has been also highlighted in uh, quite a number of Western uh, academic articles that occurs in virtual environments and gaming spaces, is what is called gender swapping. So oh. gender swapping would be, for example, I, uh, as a woman, would be using an avatar that uh, has a very masculine appearance, right? So it basically changing using a ca virtual character of a different gender identity that is quite distinct from the one in, uh, in the physical world. So through those virtual representations, for example, you can try out, play, or even try to identify yourself to a different gender identity. And according to researchers, for example, amongst male users who use feminine characters uh, in, game, in games, in virtual games, they can deploy those uh, characters for tactics to enhance their appearance and even for in-game benefits. So there can be some strategic aspect to it. But there's also a number of literature that highlights that users swap um, the gender, the gender appearance in virtual worlds um, because they want to try a different gender identity or because it provides them with something that they cannot attain in the physical world. So the virtual body should not be underestimated. It's just this, you know, uh, avatar that anybody can uh, incarnate. Sometimes there, there are greater implications when users decide to choose this or that appearance. However, also what happens in the digital space of the, or the metaverse is not limited to the confinement of the screen. So giving shape to the so-called yourself in the virtual realm is not a naive activity, detached from physical world and hits a pre-existing online and offline phenomenon. In other words, the virtual self is not separated from the physical space self as the virtual identity is, is the self transformed from the physical world self, right? So for example, it is based on certain of your cultural background, the sociocultural background, that uh, you will choose this or that uh, representation in the virtual reality, for example. Those things can impact it. So as such, it is essential to consider the space outside of the metaverse, given that existing gender roles and discourses influence the choice of virtual identity, as users bring perceptions and meanings shaped by the physical world setting. So this implies that through avatars, individuals can support and or subvert hegemonic gender norms in the, of the physical world, making the virtual realm a really crucial terrain for gender and identity research. My suggestion here is that the virtual space and the physical world influence one another, never really detached as binary opposites. I hypothesize the gender norms of the physical world can lead certain users to desire or to experiment with their gender identity in the metaverse, encouraging gender diversity and representation through virtual characters. While not all users might desire to swap genders uh, in the metaverse, we cannot overlook the fact that the virtual realm allows certain people to experience an alternative gender identity and indulge in self-expression. So I want to start with my case studies now that we see that there has been a quite a great amount of research done on gender in the virtual realm, and it's not something, it has been going on for since the beginnings of the internet, let's say. Uh, so I want to share with you a graph from last year's project titled Harassment in Metaverse, conducted together with Virtual Girl Nen. So this large-scale quantitative study among Japanese, European, and US users focused on harassment issues in the metaverse. This graph might remind you of the one previously shown by NEM, but from uh, another study that we did in 2021. So just very briefly, uh, but to be eligible and participate in the studies, a user had to use social VR and HMD, so head mounted display system, at least five times since last year. Uh, users could, could answer the Google form from September 5th to 24th uh, of 2022. And then, then we collected 876 answers from users worldwide. Um, so I'll not go into details, but I encourage you to consult the full report that is available online for free. It's titled Harassment and Metaverse. And uh, you have the uh, link written below. Uh, so just as a very brief note, we did, not inquire about, we did not inquire about the user's gender as our study aimed not to investigate whether users currently physical world gender identity match their assigned sex at birth. So just to avoid confusion, uh, here you will see written biological sex of your users and avatar appearance, because we wanted to use terms that would be the most inclusive and 
most understandable by the majority of the users. Um, and so as you can see in this graph, uh, very similar to what NAM has shown, uh, the majority of the users are still male users, uh, but more than 70% use feminine appearances, be they male users or female users. And we can also see that um, about 13% of female users play with masculine presenting avatars. So overall, we can see the gender swapping, especially amongst male users, is quite common. And we actually asked a similar question in 2021, as Nem has touched upon it. Uh, as you can see, the numbers are pretty similar with the 2022 report, uh, with the difference being the more female users in 2022 compared to 2021. What is quite interesting is in the 21 report, we asked users the reasons for engaging with avatars that had a different gender appearance. And this will be just a bit reiteration of my, what Nem said before. Uh, what I want you to pay attention to is that for while for many, the choice was motivated simply by the appearance, for about a quarter of overall users deploying an avatar of a different gender identity enabled them to express themselves better and communicate with others. So that implies that through the avatar appearance, they achieved a certain self-expression that was not attainable to them in the physical world. And when it comes to my finding that I collected through numerous surveys, in-depth interviews and participant observations since 2019, I can summarize them by saying that for my informants, uh, so Japanese men who use cute looking avatars in virtual and digital spaces, Becoming those characters enable them to temporarily free themselves from the breadwinner model of manhood, which still prevails in contemporary Japanese society. So of course, not all men claim so, but the ones that I focus on did. So we can see that the uh, virtual character enables something that some people cannot attain in the physical world due to sociocultural norms. So during my master's thesis uh, data collection, out of 51 participants, 18 expressed that being a man is difficult in Japan. For instance, users told me that being masculine in Japanese society is a heavy responsibility, as you can see on the testimonies here, right? Uh, and that most men cannot fulfill their requirements. One informant even enumerated the difficulties. He said, for example, if you do not work hard, if you do not get ahead, if you do not earn money, many women will not look at you, and that is difficult. Another user told me the image of men working to sustain their families is still very strong in Japan. And that image of man's life becomes work. As a result, it is easy to give an image of failure. Others also mentioned that adult male are oppressed and be mainly because of old fashioned ideas that are still present in Japan. And it's quite normal for men and women uh, to have to act according to general masculine and feminine studies, uh, standards. So as such, conforming to the idea that one's gender identity should be the one assigns sex at birth. In reaction to the everyday difficulties, uh, the participants I interviewed turned towards those cutesy looking avatars to get away from the expectations, right? And free themselves from being uh, male or because they were tired of uh, sociocultural expectations and they, because they couldn't express themselves as they wanted to. So those above presented difficulties partially stem from the prolonged socioeconomic stagnation that we see more or less everywhere in the world right now. Um, Several academics have si highlighted, as I show on the left-hand side uh, of this graph, uh, that basically since the 90s, there has been some uh, uh, economic stagnation, which resulted in uh, employment difficulties amongst men and women, and the life has become overall more precarious. Uh, what I wanted to note, but it's quite, quite interesting, is according to Takayuki Kiyota, a writer who collects love stories of more than 1,200 men and women, and published on the theme of love and gender, he, tell, he says that men experience difficulties in maintaining self-sufficiency, self-esteem, and seeking approval and admiration from others, leading to difficulties in everyday masculinities. This is not to paint a negative image of the physical world, but more to highlight that there are certain issues that uh, my informants have experienced have been also noted by academics uh, around the globe, right? And while vulnerability might seem to be a, you know, as a fundamental human right, many of my informants I talked with explained that them as men, they felt they did not have access to or were allowed to be vulnerable in their daily lives. 
And according to researchers such as uh, Ida Yumiko, by deploying what can be called feminine aesthetics, men distance themselves from, dif- uh, from dominant masculinity and strategically perform their gender identities. For example, my informants connect online in their free time and consciously or unconsciously challenge the daily gender expectations they are discontent with by becoming other gender identities in the metaverse. The picture I paint here is that of the physical world, like socio-economic conditions and socio-cultural gender norms that influence users' gender behavior online and in virtual environments. Of course, everyone's story is different. Everyone uses avatars in different ways and for different means. And that's what makes the word metaverse so diverse. But to live in a more gender diverse and inclusive society, we have to pay attention, listen to, and acknowledge the variety of expressions in the metaverse going beyond the avatar's appearance. I also believe that achieving gender diversity in the metaverse is not enough. We must also make it a safe place for users to express themselves or to replay characters. So on this page, I'm referring back to the large scale quantitative study harassment in metaverse that I mentioned pre- uh, previously. And as we can see from this chart, harassment in the metaverse is quite significant, right? As you can see, quite a lot of users from Japan, North America, Europe, either male or female, have experienced it. Our findings regarding harassment were similar to those of other scholars. Women and minorities tended to experience more unwanted behavior. And our data also demonstrated that playing feminine avatar beats a uh, because you are a woman or because you incarnate a virtual character that has feminine representations, tended to be reasons for harassment. Also, for example, identity-specific slurs and physical attacks were quite common uh, attacks to like non-cis gender identities. So uh, these findings demonstrate that the identity exploration aspect of the embodied avatar can be kind of a double-edged sword. In other words, while the metaverse provides users with a space to play and experiment with their gender identities, Some users are also harassed uh, for what they do. So in the metaverse, I want to discuss, in in the meantime, I want to discuss what we can do to make everyone's experience better. As we can see in this chart, most users do not want limitations by legislations. Many also believe that platform guidelines are sufficient and the idea of excessive restrictions to prevent harassment is unappealing. So rather than having legislations, uh, the people we uh, um, ask those questions to wrote that their requests and suggestions to platform to make our experience, uh, our, everyone's experience safer. So I want to conclude this talk by presenting uh, their suggestions, right? Uh, as you can see here, the, the, we summarize everything in four main kind of request, requests to platforms. As we can see, users would like to see a more flexible tool so that uh, the user and the community could defend themselves. For example, that could be tools to hide users that friends have blocked or to have a safety zone. Second, users also mentioned wanting stricter moderation and a more robust reporting system to make it easier for moderators to go through claims and punish the harasser. Third, users wish to have an adjustable safety measure and a block feature for repeated offenders, be it it the account or a suspension suspension measure of an HMD. Finally, users showed concern regarding further restrictions that might hinder their freedom or make the VR experience less enjoyable. This is also probably why the majority did not want to see any legislations implemented with the social VR space, as shown in the previous slide. Um, I really suggest to you to have a look at the survey. It's quite interesting. And I think uh, in terms of um, how we can make the metaverse uh, a better place, uh, there's some quite valuable information. Uh, so thank you for having me here today. This was a very brief presentation and just want to conclude by saying that to make everyone's experience, we have to acknowledge everyone's different uh, manners to identify in the virtual space and that the virtual realm can be become a space where users can express their gender and go beyond so- social and economic difficulties they might experience in the physical world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mila. So, and uh, thank you very much for for keeping your uh, your presentation in uh, the said 20 minutes. That's great. Um, uh, we will have the Q and A session in for the 10 minutes until the top of the hour. Uh, the first question will be the, that it's already already given in uh, the, the chat chat uh, window uh, from the Neo Neo Sam. 
uh, that uh, the the uh, uh, the he uh, he or she I I am not so sure, uh, but uh, the he's uh, he think that uh, uh, the the uh, 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 what's that sorry uh, the the gap between the 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 real gender and avatar gender. Uh, might be the might be because the the pr supply of the the uh, avatar is dominated by the the female one. Uh, what do you think? What do you think, Nema, about this? Am, am I mm -hmm. clear for the questioning? <laughs> yeah, that is very good question. I think yes. Previously, the supply of the the uh, masculine avatar is very limited. But recently, uh, masculine appetite is also increasing, so the gap is in, uh, decreasing, I think. But as I explained, uh, this is the reason why they are switching the gender in the virtual world. Half of them are answering the main reason is fashion. Uh, the supply might be affected for, for them. They might. Uh, choose feminine avatar because of the supply. Yeah. But last half of them answers the reason is communication. They say it's feminine advertise more. Uh, they are wearing feminine, feminine avatar to be more good communication to the others. This kind of people uh, is, uh, is not depending on the supply. So, for the answer to the question, yes and no. Okay. I, uh, I hope this, uh, this answer your question, uh, Neo Neo san Thank you for that. And then, uh, Thank you. I'm, floor is open for, the, for the another question. Please, never hesitate to make, make yours. <laughs> and this is a very good chance, chance for you to make that directly to the to them or Mila. <laughs> come on. Come on. Good night. Maybe from my microphone. Please uh, please come up to the microphone, uh, state your name and then uh, make make it in in English please. Yeah, this is question for Nem san. I'm I'm mm -hmm. uh, Tanaka from ITU AJ. So, uh, I'm afraid that uh, aren't you tired? Because uh, you in the yeah, virtual world, but your physical body is real, so brain may cause some confusion or something like that. Aren't you tired every day? <laughs> it's also a very, very good question. Well, yeah, that answer is uh, again yes and no. In the beginning, when I started the metaverse life, yeah, my brain sometimes confused. But after three or four, five years, I already got completely accustomed to this life. How can I say? Switching metaverse life and physical reality life is already very basic things for me. For example, for you, uh, now you are in the suit and uh, joining the conversation, yeah, you are very in formal state. But when you go back to your, your home, you wear the pajama and talk with your family. The two, uh, then this kind of mood switching is also basic thing, also for the physical uh, pe people. Of course, the extensive become very wide, but uh, yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, people can, can be accustomed to switching the life. Today, I can super quickly change myself just wearing VR Google. Thank you. Okay, thank you, good comment. And also uh, one more, uh, this is comment. I expect uh, this uh, confusion, a kind of stress, is good uh, training, anti-aging, so good inspiration to the brain. So I wish uh, in future we will have an eternal life in the metaverse world. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. It's really great, great comment, Tanaka-san. Thank you very much. I, I need to do this then and for the anti-ending. <laughs> Any other questions? We still have the five minutes. Please. 
state your name and go ahead with your question. Hi, thank you. My name is Maria de Brasefer from IFLA. Uh, well, thanks, first of all, for your presentation. It was quite interesting. Um, I think my question is more around, I don't know much about the metaverse, uh, but I've heard, for example, that there's a lot of uh, companies that are trying to launch marketing strategies via the metaverse. And because I don't really fully understand how this works, I was wondering if, for example, NEM could tell us a bit about it. Uh, so how... How does this usually work in the metaverse? Is it still everything free, or can you already interact with money on the metaverse? And do companies already have a place in it? And how are the users in the metaverse also interacting with this? Uh, yeah, just what is the, the collateral effect of this? Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you're caring about uh, some company has super big power, that could be the future problem of metaverse, right? Yes, yes, that would. <laughs> yes, of course, the, the, yeah, that is possible. That is possible question, but um, at this, at the moment, we are making very good communication between users and the companies to making the good metaverse is something like to be a god. You can set the uh, physical form or everything to the world. Yes, platformer is a god. So I can understand your careness, but uh, to make a useful service, the communication with the uh, actual user is very, very important. And uh, these services, these working services ha always have the very good uh, communication. And uh, big tech also working on uh, making the metaverse world, but their activity is not getting well at the moment because they are not making good communication with the customer. So uh, I am very optimistic for the future of metaverse because at the moment, uh, if uh, they uh, they cannot make good communication with the customer, the people uh, don't use the service. So the business doesn't work. So I think we can make good communication, keep good communication even in the future, I think. How do you think, Mira? Yes, I think it all depends, uh, as usual, with what uh, are the, uh, the company's motivations, whether it's exploitative or not. Uh, hence why I think, like like I mentioned in the beginning, like the year in chat is about promoting diversity and ethical well-being in the physical world. And we have to apply the same rules and the same, let's say, um, concerns to the virtual world, right, to the metaverse. And if we do do so, yes, I think we can have a really good experience between um, the economy and the users without having uh, monopolies and things like that. But it all depends, of course, on the... Um, on the intentions of certain companies and on the way the leaders of those companies want to uh, market themselves and how they want to use the metaverse. Because people in the metaverse are people, they're not just avatars, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. It's it's almost the top of, top of the hour and uh, now, I'll, now I need to uh, close the session. But uh, be, before that, I, I, I'd like to have the last La, uh, last few words from the, the presenters. Uh, uh, then uh, the Mila first, please, Mila. Um, thank you so much for listening to us. We are really happy uh, to have this opportunity to share our research and our recent reports with all of you. And we hope that uh, our presentations will spark some future discussions and new possibilities to collaborate and also to explore the metaverse. Thank you. Thank you, Mila. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you, everybody, for listening to our talk. I'm super happy because Metaverse is great, as I explained. But at the moment, that is very, very small world. Uh, yeah, this big body, Internet Governance Forum, finally recognized the Metaverse world, and we can talk to each other. This is very good next step. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mila, Mila and them. So uh, uh, please, please g give them the big hands for the, the big, uh, great present presentation.
Thank you very much. This session is closed. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.